Hello and welcome to my series on working with iClone. My name is Benjamin Tuttle and I've been working with iClone for over 13 years now. Hopefully by the end of the series you'll be able to create your own iClone animations and if you have any questions let me know. Thank you. All right, let's begin. To start, this is the splash screen. It contains product demo, download freebies, training resources, and character creator if you have that application. But we're going to close. All right, to begin, I'm going to show you the interface of the program. On your left is three tabs, content, scene, and visual. Content uh, provides pretty much anything you need to place into the scene. It's separated by these folders here or these icons here, and I'm going to go through them. The first thing is project, actor, hair, and cloth. The main ones that you want to focus on are animation, stage, set, props, and sometimes media, but media is more of materials and material pluses and substance and music. So scene here is pretty much your outliner. So everything in the scene here is going to display here and now that if we expand this thing out. It shows visibility and let's say I want to go to create and have a box. It'll show everything with this box here. So the visibility, and I can lock it in, you know, lock it so we don't make any uh, changes. Here is your shading. So if I want to do a wireframe, I can do that pretty easily. We'll turn it back to normal. Here is cast shadows, so if I need to cast a shadow or receive or no shadows, I can select it here. In here is subdivision or tessellation. And then this is more for physics based and not only that, but collision. And this is more of a physics thing too, so I wouldn't worry about these three yet. So in the visual tab, we have ambient occlusion in your IBL. Not only that, but you can also add HDR as well. Here is going to be your shadow settings. This is Tune Shader. This is going to be your effects like motion blur and if you want to add like, uh, if you want to desaturate or add contrast to your color scheme, you can actually do it here. And this here is your global illumination. So can check that and make adjustments if you need to. So this down here is it'll switch between by frame and real time. This is your play. Then this will take you back to the start. This will uh, refer it back to maybe like a keyframe or not. This will get to your end. This is a loop. This will adjust your vocal volume and your music volume. This is your time. And this here is your project settings. So we click that. You can actually make adjustments like let's say I want to uh, make this longer than 30 seconds. So I want to do 5000 frames. And now I can. Now like that but you can also enable TAA for anti-aliasing. There's glow settings as well. You know, bake your soft cloth animation. And a couple other things and just in case, uh, let's say you want to adjust your project settings and you don't want to click on this, you can actually click and drag and this can apply for any other of these tabs and you can just place it wherever. So, and now it's part of the group. So this down here below is your timeline. And now I'm just going to click on the timeline and just drag it down here. So it doesn't affect the viewport. So pretty much this is uh, your timeline marker marker here. So if I want to go here, I can actually set it and now I that but click on here and then press the minus key on your keyboard and you can actually zoom out if you want. So we'll be worrying about the timeline later. Just giving you an introduction. So here's a character and here's a new window called modify. This is called attribute, so this uh, has the transform and rotation. 
We can also have them look at the camera with this option. So if I rotate, you can see that it's uh, the characters following along the camera. Not like that, but you can also uh, do subdivision. This here is your motion, so you can actually edit your animation. Material. And then finally, physics. So let's say you want to expand, uh, you want to work with something like Motion Director and you don't see anything. Uh, how do you open up Motion Director? Well, up here in Window, you can actually go through quite a bit of these. So this here would be Motion Director, or if you want to change your workspace, you can. So let's say we can go to Motion Director, or we want to uh, do like a final render before you want to render everything you have your animation you can actually select that but I personally like to work with all panels something like this it's a lot easier to work with not only that but I can have a lot more control and I can easily have everything in one one setting which I can go back and forth that's just the recommendation so Next chapter, I'm going to work on Character Creator. We're going to make a basic character, and I'll show you how to export.